Before proceeding, please make sure to subscribe to Intel Maniac and turn on the bell icon for upcoming videos. You can always support my work with your likes, comments and shares. And you can join me on Facebook and Instagram at Dental Maniac. For images and transcripts, please visit my Patreon page, the link for which is given here above. Oral erythroplakia or simply erythroplakia is derived from erythro meaning red and plakia meaning flat patch. Among the various potentially malignant disorders, oral erythroplakia is a red-colored and extremely aggressive oral lesion that exhibits increased dysplastic changes, hence presenting a significant concern as dysplasia ultimately transition into oral squamous cell carcinoma. While the exact cause of erythroplakia remains unclear, certain risk factors such as smoking, tobacco use, excessive alcohol consumption, and poor oral hygiene are frequently associated with its development. Erythroplakia, although less common than leukoplakia, it is one of the most common predecessors of oral squamous cell carcinoma. The incidence and prevalence of oral squamous cell carcinoma have increased several fold in the past few decades, especially in several countries of the South Asian continent. According to a study, about 90% of erythroplakic lesions have the potential to transition into oral squamous cell carcinoma. The presence of cancer stem cells in erythroplakic lesions plays a crucial role in its progression towards malignancy. We know that stem cells are present in all our body tissues, which upon receiving external signals perform growth and repair through differentiation into different cell types and maintain body homeostasis. Similarly, stem cell populations are also present in tumors and they are termed cancer stem cells. And same as normal tissue resident stem cells, cancer stem cells are also responsible for continuous self-renewal and self-propagation of cancerous tissue over a long period of time. The key molecular marker responsible for the identification of the malignancy potential of the erythroplakic lesions within the cancer stem cells are the ATP binding cassette superfamily G member 2 protein or the ABCG2 protein, CD24, aldehyde dehydrogenase 1, and podoplanin, which is a transmembrane protein. Clinically, it predominantly affects middle-aged and older individuals and is more commonly seen in males. Erythroplakia manifests as red, well-demarcated, velvety patches with the most common occurrence on the soft palate, mouth floor, lateral part of the tongue and retromolar pad region. The condition is characterized by decreased epithelialization and increased vascularization, resulting in red, friable lesions that bleed easily upon scraping. The lesions might appear in association with leukoplakia and are termed erythroleukoplakia. The lesion is usually asymptomatic, however, few patients present with a burning sensation as a symptom. Same as leukoplakia, the diagnosis of erythroplakia also involves a diagnostic biopsy, hence confirming abnormal atropic epithelial cells lacking keratin production. Treatment strategies vary based on severity and underlying causes, often beginning with addressing risk factors like smoking cessation or alcohol reduction. For precancerous or cancerous lesions, more aggressive interventions such as surgery, radiation or chemotherapy might be necessary. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you think this video was really helpful, please do like, subscribe, share and comment if you have any questions. Thank you for watching.